And I can't tell you how many guys that used to work for WCW came up to me, pulled me to the side and say, hey, uh, just give him a good one one time for us, right? Hey, Nick Dinsmore here for the second episode of Dinsmore's Commentaries. Today we're going to be breaking down one of my favorite matches I had as my run as Eugene. It was the match between my uncle, Eric Bischoff, at Taboo Tuesday. I love the coach. Again, one of my favorite guys to work with in the business. And this match was so fun because this was the, uh, the matches where the fans would vote in on the internet polls, tweet in, or not tweet in, but text in or vote in online. And you could actually see the tabulations. The producers would come back to us and show us like, like oh, well, so-and-so's got this much percentage and so-and-so's got this much percentage. And like when it's so close, like 62% versus, you know, or, or whatever it was, uh, you don't realize actually how many votes that is because there was like hundreds of thousands of votes. I remember, oh, that's the best theme song. I love working with Eric. I've heard a lot of bad rumors about him, but working with him was, was so fun and so easy. And he knew what he was doing. He was absolutely in WWE a performer. Although I accidentally did break his ribs one time, but that's a story for another day. I guess he's uh, very good at the kickboxing or jujitsu or karate or educated feet or whatever it is he has. He was trained, I think, by Ernest the Cat Miller. And that's how Ernest the Cat Miller got into WCW. I always went in under the bottom rope and stood on the bottom rope because when I would see fans come in, like say if I took a picture with a fan in the ring, they never knew how to get in the ring correctly. It was always like an obstacle course. And they, they would always go over the bottom and I felt like that's what Eugene should do because Eugene was just a fan of wrestling. Oh, I'll put his head in the buckle. Uh-oh. That's where Eugene fires up. In my comeback, I usually do a series of punches and I can't tell you how many guys that used to work for WCW came up to me, pulled me to the side and say, hey, uh, just give him a good one one time for us, right? Um, I was as professional as I could be and never once attempted to hurt Eric Bischoff. Airplane spin. And those legitimately get you so dizzy, both guys, me and the other guy, but he's a love it. I try to do it as much and as long as I could. So you wait for it, and I did. I, I about want to vomit sometimes. That was a Hogan big boot that didn't come off right because I was so dizzy. <laughs> yes, nice and easy. No need for a false finish here because we're either going to put him in a dress or shave his head or make him a servant. So nobody's going to remember what the actual finish was because the last thing they're going to see is, is the stipulation come through. Oh, 59% shave his head. And after I shaved his head here, he came back and when he, he wouldn't die anymore and then all of a sudden it was all gray. He said he started going gray at like, like 19 years old, 20 years old, like he was fully gray like as a young man. But he was the one that wanted to do the head shaving angle. He volunteered to do it to help get Eugene over. I always remember that. He was, I mean, really, when I worked with him, he was a team player, knew his role, you know, and was good at it and gave back, helped get Eugene over, absolutely. Uh-oh, now here he comes, lay down the law. The best music in wrestling, the best walk. Look at that. That's a feeling being in the middle of the ring that music hit and he comes down the aisle like he does. The tension comes up, the energy comes up, the, the, the heat in the building comes up. You can feel the vibration, just the people rumbling. Oh my God, it's dance, dance. And it's a build like a, like a explosion. I love the concept of the Tempo Tuesday pay-per-view. A, it was a pay-per-view on a Tuesday, so we got paid more for a day that we normally didn't work, but B, just the fan interaction, which they probably do even so much more now, just on live tweeting and always trending and blah, 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 but it's always fun to, to, to give the fans something special, something different, 
the other internet pay-per-view I did like this, uh, a voting pay-per-view was uh, when, when Jimmy Snooker was my partner, which was phenomenal. It's all the build-up. Because once you shave the head, you shave the head. Then what do you do? That's the end. But it's the build-up. The match. The tease. The swerve. It's not going to be the head shave. You know it is. He walks out. He gets drawn back in the slow pace. And there's Eugene Wade. So, one of the hardest things to do is to shave somebody's head after a match because you've been sweating a little bit and the clippers usually get caught. And that's exactly what happened here. It didn't shave nice and easy, or maybe I didn't know how to do it exactly correct, but it's like, just like started gnawing into his head. And he had thick, thick hair. And right there, it just goes And it like didn't cut at all. It was like the worst clippers. I don't know, it didn't cut anything. I don't know if his hair product was in it or his thick hair, but it was just, I mean, it's cut a little bit, but. Let's fuck it. I'll just use the scissors. It started working a lot better then. I remember Milwaukee, because a couple weeks earlier, William Regal and I went to Milwaukee to do a day of uh, media for this pay per view. I remember that. And I remember uh, we were in Seattle the night before and we had sushi. And I landed in Milwaukee the next morning and I was so sick. My stomach was upset all day long doing media appearances in Milwaukee. I'm just totally so sick. But then the pay per view was there. Great story. Business all hanging out. <laughs> all the photographers, the Japanese photographers, are all taking pictures. Jimmy Suzuki right there taking pictures. They were most of the TVs and most of everything. The, the, the same Japanese photographers would be everywhere. All the pay-per-views, all the TVs. I remember there was one time I was in LA and uh, Chono showed up and I got a picture with Chono. Jimmy Suzuki took it and I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to get it. So I to Jerry, got in contact with him and got my picture of Chono. All right, that does it for this week of Dinsmore's Commentaries. Hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when the new episodes come out each and every week. Give me a big thumbs up if you would, because I'll give you one right back. If there's a match that you want to see me cover in Eugene's run, uh, put it in the suggestion box, and I'll try to get to it and cover it as fast as I can. Until next time, watch the previous episodes where uh, Eugene had a little fun with The Rock. Thanks for tuning in.